I mean, the efficient way is to grow the economy at 3% instead of 2% and yeah. to do that for yeah. a long time. But, you know, we were looking at the numbers just last week. And for goods producing workers, you know, these are the people that President Trump has created a heck of a lot of, or his policies have created a heck of a lot of goods producing jobs. Their weekly earnings went up last year $48 a week relative to trend. That's about 2500 bucks a year. Now, that 2500 bucks is going to be poured back into the economy. It's going to, you know, create consumption for those folks. And they'll have to pay a little bit more tax, too, because of the higher income. You know, that's how we uh, get the books balanced in the end is with growth, not with higher tax rates. And, the, you know, you saw that there was a proposal for a wealth tax. And, yeah. and for, for CNBC viewers, imagine if there's a 3% wealth tax. Well, the way that you figure out the capital income tax equivalent is you compare that to the income that you would get from the wealth. Right now, the risk-free in income for wealth is a little bit less than 3%. And so a 3% wealth tax is more than 100% tax on capital income. And now, I just don't know any economist who thinks that a tax rate greater than 100% on, on any kind of income is going to produce a positive outcome. But that's the kind of proposal we're seeing in Washington, sadly, right now. Kevin, the latest CBO numbers uh, gave you guys some credit. They raised, I think, the uh, GDP growth by $750 billion mm -hmm. a year relative to the previous projection. That's a huge increase. Uh, mm -hmm. Raised borrowing costs a little bit, too, um, but still thinks we'll have trillion-dollar deficits by 2022. Is it possible that they'll be proven too cautious uh, based on growth? Because even this year, we're starting off a little bit weaker than last year. Right. Well, if you go back about, you know, a year, a little bit more than a year, I think the, the, the summer before the tax cuts passed, they were saying that 2018 was going to be in the low twos. Mm -hmm. And then we got something in, in the low threes, probably. And, and so pretty much they keep going back to this fact that we've got a two or one percent growth rate that's attracting the economy. But that view, I think, is going to be rejected by the data as we move forward, because, you know, really what happened was that economists around the world really accepted that we have a new normal of, of low growth that was almost given to us by Martians. And our view in the Trump administration was that there's no new normal. It's just that we've got bad policies. And if we fix them, we can go back to just normal. And, and you know, really, almost for two years of the Trump administration, we have gone back to about normal. And we think that that will continue. And as it does, we expect that the CBO will start to recognize that as well. Has the tax cut paid for itself or will it? Uh, you know, it, it certainly hasn't paid for itself yet this year. The thing that you have to think about is that there are lots of different components of the tax cuts, like, so, for example, the child credit. Uh, the way that the corporate income tax could pay for itself is it causes all this investment and all this output and higher wages and you get more revenue. For something like the child credit, which is supported by Republicans and Democrats, you get a much lower growth effect, right? Mm -hmm. But in the end, if we grow 1% a year for 10 years more than CBO said a year ago, then absolutely the tax cuts will pay for themselves. Let's, uh, let's switch to, to trade and tariffs, if we might, mm -hmm. and try and uh, get a two-for-one here. Uh, give us the latest news on the status of the trade talks with China, which resumed this week mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. Uh, do you think it is likely, unlikely, somewhere in between, that those tariffs will go up uh, from 10 percent to 25 percent on the $200 billion worth of goods? And then walk us through what's happening with Europe. Does Europe need to be worried uh, that the administration is going to slap tariffs on their auto imports? Well, you know, uh, the, the president and the rest of the economic team, we were briefed by the folks from China over the weekend. That's been covered in the news. And, you know, my job right now is to not get in the middle of the negotiations and comment on them. You know, I know the president tweeted something about progress. And so I think that that could go as sort of like the statement of the administration on the China uh, progress. The fact is that the conversations are still going on. There's still a lot of uh, progress to make. But I think that they're still going on, and that's a positive sign that they've made progress in the past. And so, but the president has tweeted about that, and you know, I know there's uh, still a lot of work to do with regard to Europe. I think that one of the things that you've seen is that the president is really, really serious about reforming our trade deals, and that he's willing to use tariffs uh, to, you know, if people have tariffs on us, to make sure that they play fair with U.S. companies. And so, uh, there are a lot of uh, U.S. companies and U.S. exporters that aren't treated well by Europe, and President Trump's serious that they need to reform that, and if they don't then he's going to think about ways to reciprocate it. And so uh, the Secretary of Commerce issued a report this weekend, and I know that that and other things are being considered by the president at this time.